Often you will be asked to work out the cost of transactions in real world scenarios, usually working out the total cost or the amount of change needed. You will need to be comfortable adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing with integers and decimals, integers being just a whole number. For example, Emily and Chloe go to a cafe, they buy two cups of tea at £1.25 each, three muffins at £2.40 each, two sandwiches at £2.50 each, they pay with a £10 note and a £5 note. Work out how much change they will be given. So we can split this off into separate sections. First, the tea. Two cups of tea at £1.25 each, so that's a total of two times £1.25, which is £2.50. Notice how I've included the zero on the end here. If you're working with something that isn't money, you might just say 2.5, but I'll include the zero on the end since all money should be to two decimal places. Next, muffins. Three muffins at £2.40 each, so that's three times 2.40. That gives you 7.20, and again, that's in pounds. Next, we have the sandwiches. So two sandwiches at £2.50 each. So I'm going to do two times £2.50. That gets you £5. So all I've got to do now is add all of these up. 2.50 plus £7.20 plus £5. And this will give us £14.70. Notice how it says how much change will they be given. So we need to know how much they spent. Well, they, they had a £10 note and a £5 note, so that's £15. So then we're just doing £15 take away £14.70, which is 0 0.30, 30 pence in this case, or 0 0.3 of a pound. So you can give your answer here in either pence or pounds. It doesn't matter because it doesn't specify in the question. Either will be fine. The unit price of an item is the cost of the product for a fixed quantity. For example, the unit price of pasta might be 12p per 100 gram. It is often useful to look at the unit price when comparing products as it helps you accurately compare the value ignoring any deals or difference in sizes. So, for this example, a local shop sells two different sizes of chocolate bar, a 90 gram chocolate bar at £1.05p and a 220 gram chocolate bar at £2. Which chocolate bar is better value for money? So here, we're going to want to find a common mass. So let's say we want to get them both to 100 grams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the cost of each one by the mass, and then this will give me the cost per gram, but I want per 100 grams, so I'm just going to times that by 100. And that gives us, in this case, 1.17 pence. Okay, so this is for 100 grams. For the larger chocolate bar, we're going to do two pounds divided by 220, and again, times by 100, and that will give us 0.91p for 100 grams. So, which one is better value for money? Well, we want the one that costs the least for the same amount. So you can see that this one costs 0.91 pence per gram, which is cheaper than 1.17 pence per gram. So, the more expensive, as in the two pounds, is actually cheaper because you get more per pence. Profit and loss. The definition of profit is the money you made after any expenses are taken into account. To work out the profit, you subtract the total expenses away from the revenue. For example, the table below shows some information of some items sold in a shop during the day. Complete the table and calculate the total profit made on these items. So, you can see there's a missing value in each row. Let's focus on the calculators first of all. So, if there was a £12 profit and they sold six of them, then they are making 12 divided by 6... £2 profit per unit. They're selling them for £4.50, so they must buy them for or make them for £4.50 take away £2, £2.50. For the pack of pencils, we can see that they're making a profit of £4. They are buying slash making them for 70p and they sell eight of them. Okay, so we're going to start off working out how much profit they make per unit. So to do that, we're going to do £4, which is the total profit, divided by the number sold, so divided by 8, and that will give us 50p. 
So they make 50p per unit. If they buy slash make them for 70p, then that's 0 0.70 plus 0 0.50, £1.20 as a sale price. Then we have the pack of pens. We can see that there's £5.60 in profit made. We know the cost price is £1 and the sale price is £1.80. So how much do they make per unit? They make £1.80, which is the sale price, take away the cost price, so 80p. They make £5.60 in total, so we need to see how many 80p's go into £5.60. So we're doing £5.60 divided by 0 0.80, which will give you 7. Finally, the notebooks, we can see that the that they sell free. The cost price is £1.90, the sale price is £3.50. So we need to work out how much profit is made per unit. We can do that by doing 3.50, take away £1.90, the sale price, take away the cost price, and that will give you £1.60. Then we just need to times that by how many were sold, which is free. So that goes there, £4.80. From there, we just want to know the total profit. So we're just going to add this column up now. So we're doing 12 plus 4 plus £5.60 plus £4.80. And that gives you £26.40. The two most common types of bank accounts are current accounts and savings accounts. A current account is ordinarily used on a daily basis to pay for bills and make purchases. The ingoing and outgoing money then appears on a monthly statement, showing the method of transaction, the amount of money and where the money is going to slash from. The statements for current accounts look, often look similar to the image here. Savings accounts are intended for people to deposit money into and then save part of their income of which the bank will pay additional money into the account depending on the amount in the savings account. This is called interest, which is set at a percentage that can vary between banks. For example, here is part of Isabel's latest bank statement. Using the bank statement, work out how much Isabel got paid on the 5th of November and what her final balance was on the 7th of November. So here you can see the balance was £957.47, but then £500 was taken out. So to figure out how much money she had on the 4th of November in the account, we're going to need to do £957.47, take away 500 That gives you £457.47. From there, we know that the balance goes up to £1,857.47, where previously it was what we just found. So we're going to need to do £1,857.47, take away £457.47. That gives you £1,400. So how much was she paid on the 5th of November? £1,400. Finally, to work out her balance on the 7th of November, we need to add in how much she was paid. So £75 added onto this. So that's £1,833.82 plus £75. Notice how this is in the paid in column, so it's getting added. That will give you £1,908.82. If you found this video useful, why not try the topic test on our learning platform? Here, you can answer a series of questions and get instant feedback on how you've done in a written solution format that explains exactly how to solve the problem.